Hello, in this video we're going to define a numerical method for solving the one-dimensional shallow water equation without rotation, linearized shallow water equation. Um, so uh, solving wave equations, um, there are two equations uh, that depend on each other, so it's quite natural to solve them using forward-backward time-stepping. So that's forward in time for u and backward in time for h we're going to use. Um, and we're also going to start by assuming that h and u are defined at the same spatial locations. So this is, means it's co-located, or also called unstaggered, or agrid. And for um, in space, we're going to use, use centred spatial discretization. So here are the one-dimensional linearised shallow water equations without rotation. Um, and uh, we are going to assume that in x, xj in space is equal to uh, j index multiplied by delta x, the, the grid spacing, and time tn is equal to time step number n multiplied by delta t, the time step. And then we're going to h at position j at time level n um, is given by this expression, so that's here, h at position xj time level tn, and uh, ujn is equal to the velocity u at position xj time tn. So using these, we can write down um, discretizations, finite different discretizations for each of these terms individually. So you could have a, you could pause, pause the video and have a go at that. Um, for forward in time, centered in space, and backward in time, centered in space. Or I'll reveal the terms one at a time, and once you feel confident, you can pause the video and have a go at the next one. So for du by dt, um, going forward in time, we've got u at time level n plus 1 minus u at time level n divided by delta t. So this expression is, this equation is being represented at uh, time level n, which is why we've gone forward in time to get the gradient in time. Um, and then dh by dx, using centred spatial discretization, is hj plus 1 minus hj minus 1 all over 2 delta x. And this, because the whole equation is representing at time level n, this gradient is at time level n. So now you can pause the video and have a go at the next one. Remember this one is, is backward in time, so the, um, uh, you can represent this whole equation at time level n plus 1 and go backward in time to get the gradient in, in time and use centred in space. Pause the video and have a go at that. And now I'll, I'll do it. Uh, so we've got rate of change of h with time. Now this is the expression for the gradient of h at time level n plus 1 using backward in time, backward in time approximation and centred in in space for the velocity uj plus 1 minus uj minus 1 over 2 delta x and the whole equation is being represented at time level n plus 1 so the uh, velocity gradient is at time level n plus 1 um, so this is a backwards time step but it doesn't mean there has to be a, a solution of a matrix because u, the velocity, is already available at time level n plus 1 because we've solved the equation for u first. So let's do some uh, stability analysis to see if this method is stable for any, uh, in any, for any time steps. We can use von Neumann stability analysis. and we, So we need to calculate an amplification factor a for each wave number k. We assume wave-like solutions for h and u. So we assume that h at position j time level n is equal to some constant h multiplied by a to the power n e to the power i k j delta x. And the velocity u is the same, but it's scaled by a different, a different constant. They're, they're not equal. a to the power n e to the power i k j delta x. For some constants, h and u. So you can um, substitute these equations into the equations of the numerical and method. So substitute these into... Uh, these equations, and after um, you can also define a current number c is equal to uh, square root of gh times delta t over delta x. So this current number now is based on the wave speed rather than based on the fluid velocity. So substitute those these equations into the equations of the numerical method, and then simplify and rearrange to get an equation for the amplification factor a. You should get an equation like this after quite a bit of manipulation. We've got a, a, a probably a complex number here. So there are, there are two solutions for A here. We've got a plus or minus. 
Um, this is correct because there are two analytical solutions to shallow water equations. There are second order waiver equations and there's also a plus or minus in the analytical solution. Um, if we assume that the current number is less than or equal to 2, the magnitude, then this term here is always going to be um, greater, than zero, greater than 0, so the square root is going to be real, and so this whole thing is going to be a complex number, and uh, this term will cancel with this term. Um, when you, if you find the magnitude of the complex number, so multiply the complex number by its complex conjugate, you'll find that the magnitude of A is always equal to 1. So this scheme is stable and it doesn't damp any waves. All amplitude of all waves is, is maintained as long as the time step is sufficiently small, c magnitude of c greater, less than or equal to 2. However, if the current number is greater than 2, um, then this term here can be negative, and so then we get this magnitude of the amplification factor, which, depending on, depending on k delta x, this can be greater than 1. So the scheme is unstable for current number greater than 2. And there's just a reminder of the current number using the square root of gh. So this numerical method, um, forward-backward with an a-grid, is conditionally stable. It's stable for a current number less than 2. And in the next video, we're going to look at the dispersion properties, the dispersion relation of this scheme.